Hello, everybody. I'm here uh, to speak to you for a few minutes about the uh, inclusive finance. And I'm very happy that uh, you are convening this uh, conference, uh, the summit, Inclusive Finance Summit India. It's a very important issue that uh, we have been talking about for many, many years now. Uh, and also because uh, you wish to honor me on this occasion to give me the Lifetime Achievement Award. I feel very honored and I feel very happy that uh, uh, you give this recognition to the efforts that we have been making. And it has been a long time since we began this, uh, what became known as microcredit. It started in a small village uh, and then expanded and we created a bank called Grameen Bank. Now 42 years, uh, globally it has expanded everywhere. We, were, we practice uh, microfinance in many different countries around the world, including in the richest country like the United States. And it's been uh, recognized. I have no complaint about that. People pay attention to it. That's how it has been uh, adopted in many, many countries. But I keep saying that after all this recognition, all this practical demonstration that it works, you can do banking for the poor people. This is not something uh, not unknown, people can do that anywhere in the world. But it's still, it's not the uh, part of the mainstream financial system. It's still the uh, footnote in the financial system. That's where uh, the complaint that I keep raising, that the, something is wrong in the understanding, something is wrong in the attitude, in the policy making, that uh, make microfinance and such things that remain as a footnote. Now in that context, having the Inclusive Finance Summit is very important to raise this issue again uh, in a different way. It's an inclusive summit, inclusive finance way. Uh, but I'd never felt comfortable with this idea of inclusive finance because I think the, it, the whole uh, formulation of inclusive finance terminology uh, misses out the issue, basic issue. Uh, at least that's the way I, I have been reacting to it. I, the way, that's the way I've been seeing it. Uh, because inclusive finance gives me the impression, or maybe it gives the impression to many others, that we are talking about existing institutions kind of extending their area of work to address the people who are missed out in the first round so that they can be brought in. Uh, the, the institutional side somehow uh, it's not emphasized, uh, but my whole issue is, uh, is the financial institutions, the way it is built, is built to serve the rich. Basically, all the financial institutions are institutions for the rich. If you call them bank, they are actually bank for the rich. Uh, so if you want to reach out to the people who are left out, say the poor, we have to build the banks for the poor. These are different kinds of institutions. Same institution, the institution which is built to serve the rich and the privileged cannot serve the people who are not rich before because the design of the institution doesn't allow it. When we talk about uh, microfinance, when we talk about banking for the poor, we are talking about some basic departure from the way, uh, from the, way the financial institutions are built. Financial, financial institutions are built on the concept of uh, uh, collateral and all other things, financial guarantees and so many other things. But we are talking about something very different. When we talk about microfinance, it's a non-collateralized banking. You forget about the whole the idea of uh, collateral. Uh, the, the moment you bring collateral, you are getting away from the poor people. Uh, so this is a basic thing. You have to redesign the whole institution itself. It's not the same institution. Not only is non-collateralized, we're saying if you're talking to maximize profit of that, out of this, again, this is if you are in a different kind of uh, regime, uh, we are not talking about serving the people. So we are talking about social business, business to serve people, for business to solve the problem of the people in a business way, uh, rather than make money. So it's a, it's a non-dividend company to solve human problems. So this is another feature. Uh, for financial institutions serve the poor. It's a, a social business, it's non-collateralized. 
uh, and it has to depart completely from the existing financial system. So that departure part is to me is important because otherwise you will never get to the people uh, which is missed out. So sometimes it's called two billion people are missed out from the financial system. And so important, the finance is so important, that's why we agree, and the, that's why the summit is here talking about how to bring that uh, finance to the people who are left out, the people, unbanked people, to be included into the banking system. It will be included only if we build the new financial institutions for them. Existing financial institutions will not do that. Let's not fool ourselves. Uh, you have been working very hard to make it happen. It will not happen. Uh, so we have to come to creating a separate institution. There is no escape from that fact. So let's put our emphasis on that. It's very important that we bring financial services to the poor people. I have been talking about it, and you have been talking about it. I'm not the only one. Globally, everybody is talking about it. It's, to me, it's important because it's a financial services are like uh, economic oxygen to the people who never enjoyed that oxygen. If we don't have oxygen in a room, in a place, we cannot breathe because uh, breathing needs oxygen. And if you don't have oxygen, you collapse. You cannot function. You become dysfunctional. That's what happened to people when they don't have the financial oxygen. And they cannot financially function. They become dysfunctional. And we call them poor people. The moment you bring the financial oxygen to them, they become alive, active, creative. They're as good human being as anybody else. So that's the missing point. How do you bring that oxygen? You cannot bring that oxygen in the old fashioned banking way. It's impossible. It's just you can do a little bit here, a little bit there, but this we are talking about billions of people and that's impossible to do that. So we have to create a new kind of financial institutions. I'm glad many are recognizing that. India has recognized that. That's why they're giving licenses, uh, limited licenses to the NGOs who are doing microfinance because the banks will not be able to do the job what uh, these uh, new banks will be doing. Uh, this is a completely different system of banking. And that's what is needed. I need, you will be needing a new law. Uh, not the existing banking law cannot create those banks. We need new banking law to create the new banking institutions. That way, limited licenses have been offered. And now, looking at them, design the law so that uh, many more institutions can be built like that. So this is the most important part of it. Uh, I hope uh, policymakers, lawmakers, practitioners will become aware of that uh, and take action because the more we delay, more we'll make it more painful, particularly in the context of ex extreme concentration of wealth. All the wealth in every single country, in the, every single community, wealth goes to the top. So it's a system, the financial system which is built is a machine which mops up all the wealth from the poor, from the bottom, and pushes to the top. That's the machine that we have today. Unless we change that machine, redesign the machine, instead of mopping up the wealth, to the, sending it to the top, it picks up the wealth from the top and brings down to the people so that it can be shared by everybody else. That's the machine that we have to build. That's a new financial system. New financial system is not to mop up the savings from the rural areas, send it to the urban areas, mop up the savings from the poor communities, give it to the rich communities. That's not the system that's going to work for us. It has to be a different kind of system. So we have to address the basic issues here, is extreme concentration of wealth. And financial system is the vehicle through which it takes place. We have to redesign that system so that wealth is not moving up in the sky and in the hands of few people, it is coming to the bottom. All the wealth accumulated at the top is released, comes back to the people by through the financial institution that you'll be building. That's what the finan inclusive financial system is all about. It's about institution building. It's not about words. It's not about just uh, tinkering here and tinkering there. It's a basic problem. The way wealth concentration is going on, uh, we are waiting for a ticking time bomb to explode. Socially, it will explode very soon, politically, socially, economically. 
And we are not noticing, we're so happy making money, lots and lots of money. It's a big fun to make money, but forgot that uh, it has a big, big cost, social cost. It's an untenable system. So you have to, it's not only doing favor to the poor people, you'll be doing favor to the, everybody, the rich and the richest. Because when the explosion comes, nobody will be spared. And it's not too far. So this is something that I would like, I thought I would share with you. And thank you very much for uh, giving me this honor to speak to you. And also thank you for the award that you have given. And I hope this award will remind us that we have a big job to do. Thank you very much.